So we've got a bottom bracket here, just brought in by a viewer actually today. I thought it was gonna be a really quick, simple job just to replace the bottom bracket for them. And I started making a, a YouTube short about using white lithium grease, because this is covered in white lithium grease. And I was just there scraping it all off because what's happened is that lithium grease has expanded and caused like loads of calcified mess in here. I'll show you on the, on the YouTube short that I did. But now I realize what's going on because on the non-drive side, the, the lithium grease has expanded so much that it's held on to the metal uh, insert here and now we have the metal insert attached to the non-drive side and the metal insert on the drive side still attached here. So now we have a slightly bigger problem. Now, just to illustrate the point, these are the Hambini gauges. On this side, 40.5, nice fit. On the non-drive side, this is the 41 millimeter and that rattles. So what we're gonna do is carefully extract that from that, give it all a really, really good clean, bond it back together, let it cure, and then refit a bottom bracket. Okay, let's go. This is just using the same bearing extractor to get it out of the frame, to try and pull the bearing out of the cup. Okay, that is what a Shimano bottom bracket bearing looks like, if you're ever interested. It's not a very big bearing, actually. So the next mission is to get this aluminium cup off here without damaging it. And it is stuck. Cordless heat gun. Every mechanic should have one. They're amazing. Seriously, we used this in the workshop for um, just melting that like red Loctite that you get in suspension components. It's so easy to have in the suspension room just to melt down some Loctite quickly. It's moving. Final bit. It's not giving up without a fight. Putting in a call to a friend who knows about glue. Hi, Martin. Awesome. Martin says, easy composite, the voodoo glue is the stuff I need. Four pound a tube, about five minutes worth of working time. Let's get someone order. It's off. Look at all that. That is all calcified white lithium grease. We just didn't need to do that at all. What a mess. Okay, this is about a day later and we've just taken delivery of some new Voodoo glue from uh, Easy Composites. Gotta say, super easy, like this was about five quid and it came pretty much next day delivery. I'll talk you through that in a second. What's been going on while we've not been on camera is that we've meticulously cleaned this aluminium insert. Now, a few of you will say, well, was it galvanic corrosion? And no, it wasn't because when you get galvanic corrosion, for anyone who's got a road bike and a turbo trainer will tell you that it turns into like a white dust and things sort of just sort of dissolve. Whereas this was actually like calcification lumps. You have to sort of scrape it off. So I didn't want to sand this. That would have been the easy thing to do because then we're going to change the dimension. So this has been in a vinegar solution to let all that dissolve. And then we've been polishing it with like mother's mag. And we've got it down to a pretty clean surface. And then of course we've been cleaning all those contaminants off with IPA. So, which I'll be doing again before we put any glue near this. So that's kind of really good clean. Exactly the same on the inside of the car, but and again, not using any abrasives, just using uh, cleaning fluids to make that nice and clean. So we've got two really good clean surfaces. So bonding this together, we need to think about the alignment a little bit. And so my plan is to use the new bottom bracket. So I've already installed the, the drive side, which is a good side. And we're gonna use the Park bearing press, which is actually a good fitting bearing press. Um, and when we've got that in, we'll hopefully use that bearing press in situ to actually provide a bit of pressure and the alignment needed while the glue cures.
is that this resin mixes itself as it goes through this nozzle. You can see how it's turning black as it goes down. A hellish smell. <laughs> wow. Oh, yeah, that's got a smell. So because we're putting nylon into aluminium, just going to use a very small smear of the Maxima grease. A few of you asked me actually why I don't use a ceramic grease. And the reason is, is that quite often when I've used ceramic grease in the past, it just all kind of washes out. I haven't tried every single ceramic grease on the market, but my experience using this so far, that even with a good bit of power washing, it does seem to stay in place. Okay, we're going to leave that just like it is while everything cures and hopefully that is going to be a nicely aligned and solid fit. Okay, we'll check back in about 10 minutes. So this has had its full 12 minutes now of curing time. But before I give it back to the customer, I want to make sure that everything is worked. So I'm going to pull this out and extract that bottom bracket again, just to make sure that aluminium sleeve is going to stay put. So I'm going to use bear and extractor tool. I'd say that is a good result. I'd say that is a lovely clean job. So what's nice about this is you can still feel the resistance. This is actually a proper legitimate press fit. Sweet. Cranks back on. Happy days. 
sadly the cusper didn't give us the left hand crank arm so that's as far as we go hope that video was useful everybody thanks very much for watching as always i'm sure you're going to have absolutely loads of comments and questions just fire them down into the comment section and i'll try and answer as many as i can till next time take it easy